You are listening to Wild About Arizona, the official podcast of the Arizona Game and Fish Department. Now, welcome to Wild About Arizona. I'm John Treeweather with the Arizona Game and Fish Department and a special broadcast coming from the Arizona Game and Fish Department Outdoor Expo presented by Shikar Safari Club International. Today, we are talking about a field guide to amphibians and reptiles in Arizona, the second edition. And with me today is two of the three authors, Andy Holy Cross and Randy Babb. Gentlemen, welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, let's get a quick background introduction from both of you for those of you who don't know so we can learn about you. Randy, uh, we'll start with you. What's your background in history? Well, I uh, retired from the Arizona Game and Fish Department, worked there about um, 30 years, and before that, with the Forest Service for a while. So been at it for a while. Native Arizona, love reptiles and amphibians, always been a big interest. And you're very popular around these parts at the Game and Fish Department, Randy. That surprises me greatly. <laughs> Andy, what about yourself? Uh, I work for uh, Maricopa Community Colleges. I work at uh, Mesa Community College. Uh, I've been there for about 20 years. Prior to that, I worked for Game and Fish for about a year. And prior to that, I think I spent about 30 years in grad school. So <laughs> th- <laughs> this this is a, did you ever recover from that? <laughs> uh, barely. <laughs> This is a really uh, neat book, a field guide that we have here. It's the second one that uh, you've done. And kind of tell us about this. Just tell us about this book and kind of its purpose, its background, uh, what you hope that it would help people with. So the the purpose is it's an outreach publication, and it's to just mainly help uh, Arizona residents and visitors be able to identify the amazing diversity of amphibians and reptiles that we have in our state. Uh, Its genesis came about, oh, uh, about 2005 or so, I think. Um, The department reached out and asked if we would like to put together a little guide to the amphibians and reptiles in Maricopa County. And we did that, and uh, one of the assistant directors really loved that publication and then asked us if we could put together a book for the entire state. So how long does it take to create this? So the the first edition um, took a year, believe it or not, which is pretty short. Uh, Tom Brennan and I did that with a lot of help from Randy. And, um, you know, but we were working on it full time over that year. It meant a lot of field trips to pretty remote locations in Arizona to find amphibians and reptiles to get photos for the book, um, which was, you know, that we love that part. <laughs> a lot of field trips, right? Um, so we were able to, to pump that thing out pretty quickly, I think. What's your vision? What's your goal for somebody who has this, this book in the field? How, how, how is it designed to help them? It's supposed to be, and I think, I think we hit the mark or very close to it, really simple and utilitarian. A lot of pictures, oftentimes there's pictures of different color phases of animals, like the uh, long-nosed snake is a good example, and uh, speckled rattlesnakes. And so oftentimes people get um, uh, fixated that this thing should look exactly like that. And when in reality, animals or wildlife demonstrate the whole variety of colors and differences that humans uh, exhibit. So animals can be big and skinny and dark and light and all kinds of different colors. Anyway, this guide, our hopes is to make it a super utilitarian, super easy to use guide. And we tried to hit the mark between uh, super technical for professionals and easy to use for the uh, hiker and hunter and the eight-year-old son or daughter. So, I mean, the book is really for anybody, any knowledge level from knowing all things about uh, reptiles to knowing basically nothing. Correct. And I, I think the, the central goal of any field guide is identification. I mean, that's, that's what people want, is they want to be able to identify that animal and, and hang a name on it. Um, in addition, you know, we'd like to give them as much accurate information as we can about its natural history, its life history, where you can find it. There was a great struggle over current taxonomy, and we consulted with a lot of uh, experts nationally over this these uh, changes that were incorporated in this new edition. And it was uh, it it's was a nightmare. It was it was <laughs> it was onerous. It was a real ordeal for us. And um, yet, I think that's one of the strengths of the book because our goal was to make this as relevant. Uh, to uh, the current ta- or the taxonomy of the animals as long as possible. So we wanted something that wasn't going to be out of date in a week or two weeks. Although no doubt, as soon as something's published, it's already out of date because <laughs> science rolls on. 
But that was kind of one of the main reasons of doing the second edition, right? Yeah, I think our primary, um, you know, reasons for doing the second edition, we've got a number of new additions, unwelcome additions to Arizona's herpetofauna now, um, these non-native species that have established breeding populations in the state. So we needed to add accounts for those so that when people see them, they know what they're looking at. But then also the taxonomic changes, I think Randy calculated we had like 30 or 40 changes to the scientific names of these animals since the first edition. Well, that that's pretty significant. It is, and, and I think one of the things that we really wanted to point out is that, you know, there's a lot of disagreement amongst biologists about which taxonomy is correct in some cases. And so we had to get into the primary scientific literature and make some of those decisions, listen to all the authorities and look at all the evidence and make those decisions. Um, one of the things that the department had us do this time is there's a, a downloadable PDF that is sort of a guide to our reasons for landing on the taxonomy that we ended up adopting. Um, and also providing a, a resource where members of the public can go look at the primary literature and they can make those decisions for themselves. They don't have to necessarily follow the, the taxonomy that we're following in the book. So it's neat because I had a chance to look through the book and it's full of uh, interesting facts, uh, great pictures. Uh, Randy, I know you you worked, did you Takes, did you take all these pictures or illustrate these? Or you're very involved with that, though, right? Yeah, I, I, I took some of the photos. So did Andy and so did Tom. The vast majority of those are Tom. And it's really unfortunate he can't be here because he is such a huge part of this project. Um, and uh, so we strove to get pictures that were... Uh, You'll notice they're slightly superior above the animal and then laterally. That's how most people look at things, slightly from the above instead of right on the same level. So we, we try to take pictures that demonstrated or people would be have that perspective when they, they saw them. And then uh, there's some uh, figures in there that both Tom and I did. Tom's a wonderful graphic artist. And, uh, and so the new figures are more um, diagnostic, so they show uh, paratoid gland shapes and head shapes on some of the animals and uh, how a sidewinder moves. And hopefully that's all going to be helpful to people in identifying these animals. Well, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's, it's nicely detailed. I know what was the, there was a lizard that uh, stood out to me, if I can find it. I think, yeah, this one, the zebra tailed lizard. I just, it, it's so neat to look at. And then you've also got it flipped over so you can see yep. what the underbelly looks like. Yep. Because there's another species that looks, as you can see, very much like it. And so being able to look at those undersides and where those bars and blue patches are help you to discriminate those two from one another. Well, and then I looked at it and I was like, one wow, way. that's an interesting lizard. I'll probably never see that. And then I look at the map here and it, it looks like it is pretty, uh, it, it's in a lot of Arizona, though. Yeah, they're, yes. right, they're right here on the range. <laughs> I've, I've seen them when I was out here working back in the day. And 17 miles an hour. They are a streak. And so when you see them, I think about 75% of the time I see them, it's kind of a blur. And I'm thinking, that's probably a zebra tail lizard. But every now and then they stop and wag that tail at you. And you see the, the white bars like you do in that one photo. And there's no doubt what you're looking at. Um, and it's nicely categorized, too, because you've got it laid out between, you know, you start with frogs and toads. It goes into, uh, you know, it's got turtles here. It goes into lizards. I mean, this is really, it's, it's, it's laid out uh, really well. And I mean, that's got to help, again, anyone from the beginner to the expert. Yeah, it, it does. And, and to get back to what Randy was saying, you know, Tom Brennan was such an integral <coughs> part of this book. And he's largely responsible for the layout and design of the book with the first edition. And that is one of the things we did not want to change much because we got such positive feedback on how it's laid out after the first edition. So although there's lots of new information, there's new species, new taxonomy, um, we wanted to keep the layout basically the same because we felt it was really friendly, very accessible. Um, you know, we've organized things so that species that are often confused are on the same page with one another. And, um, and that's not always the case with all field guides. Any uh, interesting stories or adventures uh, that you had while putting this book together? Well, uh, our, our friendship survived, and so that's, uh, <laughs> that's important. <clears throat> and, and, you know, Andy and I have now worked on enough publications, and I can say we've worked with other people on enough of those. That's, that, that's not always the case. Uh, um, so, you know, life gets in the way, all kinds of stuff. But um, 
you would think just an updating of the field guide, and I think we were a little arrogant on that too, that, oh, we'll be able to pan this out in no time, and holy cats. It, uh, so we revisited every part of the entire guide from stem to stern, I would say probably about a dozen times. And, uh, and you know, that, that can get real tedious. The taxonomy thing was very vexing for both of us. I know, you know, we were having discussions among ourselves and then bringing other people in. We had other biologists say, that is absolutely wrong. You guys got this all goofed up, you know? And so, <laughs> it, it, and, and, and then other guys say, oh no, this should have been done decades ago. So uh, it's all over the map. But I think the, the main message on stuff like this is it takes a lot of people to do something even apparently as simple as this, because uh, without the other expert um, opinions and uh, help from the people in the acknowledgement and many other people that aren't acknowledged, uh, we'd have never got it done. Yeah, I think, you know, to follow up on that, it's, um, you know, we went over every word, everything, every single thing in the guide this time around. Um, and just like with the first edition, we also sent this out to a whole host of our colleagues, and they're mentioned there in the acknowledgements, and asked for their feedback. So we sent you know early drafts of this out and got tons of feedback on the maps, on the biology that we report in the species account. And so uh, uh, that quality is not, it doesn't reflect just the expertise of Andy, Randy, and Tom. It reflects the expertise of a community of herpetology buffs in Arizona. Did you ha did, did you go out and get every a picture of every species that is in this book? Almost every. Yeah. There's a few if you look at the also in that downloadable PDF that's available on the website, there is photo credits. And so every photo that's in there We've got the credits on it. And so a few of those we did not take, um, but we credit the photographer in those cases. Yeah. But mostly it's the, the three authors, yeah. mostly mostly Tom and Randy. And then I, I managed to sneak a, a few snake photos yeah. in there. Yeah, uh, Tom, by and large, took most of the photos. We, uh, you know, some of the problems were getting some of the introduced species in our hand. Yeah. And so um, the uh, cliff chirping frog in there, the, um, that animal, uh, there were... There's very few specimens of that. And the uh, white spotted wall gecko, we couldn't get our hands on one of those darn things. They're, they're like lightning. They are really difficult to catch and they run up to the top of buildings. So, uh, you know, those kind of things were right down at the end. We were, we were up against the deadline and we said, we got to get one of these. We got to get one of these. So um, uh, it, it was difficult, but, but lots of people help with photos and, and, uh, and other things. Yeah, that's got to be a little challenging and stressful to... Yeah, it, you know, the, we spent, I don't know how many days on the phone, Bab and I, going through stuff together at the same time, sort of writing. I mean, we've probably got hundreds of hours logged on the phone while we were editing this, this second edition and putting it together. In fact, Randy recently put up a, a photo on Facebook of an agitated Western Diamondback rattling and... And uh, I, I posted underneath there. Reminds me of you after about five hours of working on the second edition. <laughs> yeah, it was good. when we were done. It was kind of like a divorce, you know. I, Andy oh, wasn't was there like on the a, phone yeah, every day. I know. We had to call every, <laughs> yeah, every couple days. Withdrawals. It was. Tough. Are you going to make it for a third edition then? <laughs> well, we hope so. You know, the, um, some of the things that are in this book, we are quite confident are going to change in the next few years, and that's it's just the weeks. way. <laughs> yeah, it's just the way science is, and so. Hopefully, and no doubt we're going to have more introduced species oh, no doubt. Uh, pop up. And so uh, we'd like to keep doing updates as long as possible. And I think there was, what, uh, maybe 12, 15 years between this one? Yep. And so maybe a little bit more regular, you know, maybe maybe it needs to be visited every 10 years, maybe every eight. I, I really don't know, but... Um, we know things will continue to change because that's the way science works. Well, and the cool part is, again, we're broadcasting from the Game and Fish Expo where both of you have been here uh, promoting the book, uh, signing it, and interacting with people. And that's got to be really cool for you to interact with uh, people in Arizona and just uh, talk to the book about them, whether they're really into uh, amphibians and reptiles or they're just kind of curious about them. Yeah, that's it's really rewarding, especially considering the fact that the majority of books that were bought today were bought either by kids or by parents for kids. And um, I find that, you know, especially rewarding. I think a lot of us that are in herpetology today started getting into it, you know, when we were six, eight years old. Um, and so that that's really rewarding. I was able to meet 
meet at a funeral, unfortunately, of a, of a colleague, uh, a young man who's in college at U of A, who came up and showed me his field guide from the first edition and said, this is the reason I'm in herpetology. And so, yeah, we love it. Yeah. We love it when the young people are... Yeah. Are as into it as as we are, and it, and uh, I think uh, both of us were a bit surprised about how anticipated this second edition was, and um, and then on top of that, some really um, uh, magnanimous reviews by uh, colleagues and and some very noted colleagues, and so yeah, we're 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 I mean I think both of us are really pleased with with how it turned out because. There's always a great deal of apprehension regarding reception and things like that. Okay, so I'm just curious here because in the back of the book, there's also rulers on the inside of each cover, which is in <laughs> yeah. case you'd like to... Was there a story behind that? Or? Well, you know, uh, one of the things that you use to identify, you know, am- amphibians and reptiles sometimes is, you know, lengths of various parts, et cetera, on the animal. And so um, a lot of time you want to you want to be able to measure something and you've forgotten your ruler, right? But now it's right there on the inside cover. We're laughing because, you know, I, I'm a scientist and, and so is Bab and... And, uh, you know, but all we use is the metric system, right? Scientists, we use the metric system. And we we had a, a bit of an argument over whether or not we should also have a ruler in inches on the front cover. And clearly I lost that argument. We were... Um, and this was this. So was, you have options. You right. have and, options. And this is trying to hit the the mark that we were talking about, making it right. usable for uh, everybody, including our colleagues, professional colleagues. And so, if it was just about professional colleagues, everything would be in metric, yep. and there'd be a lot more technical terms that are unexplained and things like that. And so, Andy and I'd get into it, and Andy tends to go a little bit more way than. I do, and so I would say, audience, Andy, audi- audience, Andy, and so we'd have these debates about, and so Andy says, I want that metric ruler. I says, if we do that, we're having an English ruler in there, too, you know, so it's, it, there's a lot of compromises between us, but I think that also maybe helped us hit the mark better. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. Well, and what I wanted to ask about was, I guess I'm just curious, because I, th- I think it's neat, so in the back here, you have... You know, you have all the species listed, and you have a little checkbox and like a date location. Have you ever? Uh, has anyone ever come up to you with like a a fully completed? Uh, of seeing every single one? Yep. That Well, not every single one, but that young man that I mentioned just a minute ago, uh-huh. he came up and that's what he showed me in the back of his book is the first time he had a date and a place written down for the first time he saw every single one of those animals that he had checked off. I yeah. just think that's so cool and Oh, neat. it's really cool. It's, it kind of follows, you know, birding was that way for a long time. You know, birders can't collect specimens, right? Um, and so, you know, it's checklist and lifeless. And herpetology is very much moving in that direction these days. And so that's the reason for that inclusion. The other thing is, is that, you know, a lot of the advances that are reported in this book um, aren't advances or contributions from professional, you know, herpetologists, scientists. They're from people that are enthusiasts that are out in the field and they find an animal, the first animal in mountain range X or Y, or they're geographic distribution notes, their life history notes, um, notes on predation, et cetera. And so all of that information is included in there as well. And having that thing in the back, that allows them to write down, you know, a few details about their observations. So if you think about it, um, the number of uh, interested citizens, if you will, hobbyists, enthusiasts, semi-professionals or something compared to the actual biologists doing the work, their numbers are, you know, thousands to one uh, to each, each real herpetologist. And so the likelihood that they're going to see something of note or interest is far greater than any of the professionals. And so without these contributions from guys just out crawling around or they're looking for a snake here and they see something different and then they come back and report it, that that stuff is 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 gold. I mean, we would never know a lot of what we know if it weren't for these people that were seeing neat things and then generously sharing that information. Yeah, these these guys and gals that we call citizen scientists, they are just, a lot of them are out in the field so much more than professional scientists. Um, They just get out there. I mean, they're spending hundreds of dollars on gasoline per week, you know, cameras in hand and, and really enthusiastic and sharing their observations with the broader community. And as speaking of your colleagues, too, they gave you some nice reviews on the book. 
we, we, yeah. <laughs> we've been uh, humbled and very flattered by some of the things that uh, people we know have written, and we didn't even have to pay them a lot to write them. No, <laughs> they, uh, they actually, uh, uh, you know, took a look at it and then wrote what they thought, and, and that, was, that was very, very heartwarming. Uh, where can people purchase this field guide? Well, it's available at every, all the Game and Fish Department offices. Um, and you can just walk in and pick up a copy. Um, you can order it on the Game and Fish Department website. And then I believe it's going to be widely acceptable or accessible at a lot of different uh, national parks, uh, county parks and things, because they're purchasing them from the Game and Fish Department and, and reselling them there. So um, it's likely to be available in a lot of surprising spots. And that's uh, azgfd.gov, of course, our website. Uh, will you sign my copy today? Absolutely. Yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> yeah, if, okay. you, if you want to take a chance of uh, the value of it dropping, we're yeah. happy to put okay. it in. <laughs> and hopefully, maybe I'll see that lizard that you were talking about, and I can have my first uh, check. There, there you go. go. <laughs> <laughs> well, Randy and Andy, thank you so much for being with us today and uh, talking about uh, your new book, A Field Guide to Amphibians and Reptiles in Arizona, the second edition. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thanks for the department support. Thanks for listening. Visit us online at www.azgfd.gov.